So yeah, uh, today we'll be discussing chapter nine and 10. They're also like as many of the chapters of this book, they're brief and uh, they're just uh, focused on a very specific point. And here the, the point that we'll be talking about is uh, how to install the packages uh, on Windows and, and uh, on, app, uh, on Mac and what is the best practice, what to do and what not to do. We'll talk about uh, the difference of be the difference between binary packages and source packages. Uh, this is for chapter nine, and in chapter ten, we will uh, also keep discussing the same topic, but we will focus on how to deal with uh, source packages that are available locally and how to load these packages. So to start with, so I think that. One of the very first things that one learn in R is to how to install a package. So it's a for me, I was like, oh, like how do they manage to for forget to teach you this about R? But uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I think install packages is uh, so many of you are familiar with it. So you, to install a package, you use this function and you provide it with the name of the package, and then a package will be the downloaded. But here it will be downloaded from CRAN. And uh, in CRAN, the packages are available there as pre-compiled binaries. Uh, and so to, in, or, in order to, to download a pre-compiled binary from CRAN, you use install packages. But if, for example, a package that you're interested in is available as source code on GitHub, uh, then you can't use install packages, but you will be using a function from dev tool called install GitHub. And this will allow you to uh, you can use it basically the same way as you use install GitHub, install packages. You'll provide it the, the name of the package on GitHub, the name of the repo, and it will uh, install the, the source code from the GitHub repo. Uh, so this is an, ex an example. For example, if you have uh, here, this is install packages. There is a package called DevTools which, uh, that you are interested in. Then you would say DevTool packages. Uh, install packages and dev tools, and then you will load the, the package. Uh, so yeah, so th this is it for the first part. Uh, and then once you have the, the packages, uh, once a binary or source package is installed, they are identical. So you don't have to care about this difference between the two. Uh, but I think that uh, some packages, the source packages need to have uh, some other installations available on your machine. Uh, yeah. So uh, on Windows, usually you will uh, need to, in order to have uh, source packages. Uh, yeah, so on Windows, the, yeah, if for packages that are pre-compiled, like in binary state from CRAN, uh, you'll need a compiler. And this compiler for R is called RTools. So R tools is a, is a software. It's not a package that you can download in R. So, but you will need it to download it, and then uh, R R or R Studio will recognize that it's available. Uh, and here, the the author uh, left few recommendations on how to uh, recommendations about installing R uh, R tools. Uh, so, if you are installing R tools, pay attention to these uh, two details. Uh, but if you're not using Windows and you're using Mac, uh, the first thing to do is to see if you have uh, use this function that has uh, says has development or is development environment. And if uh, if everything is installed, it, I think it will return true. So it, uh, everything is uh, set. But if it's not the case, then you will need to install uh, the requirements here. And this basically, to, you will need to install Xcode. So I think Xcode is the R tools of Mac. Is this the, the compiler for Mac, if I'm right, correct about this? Uh, but here you would install it. So it, here it, it's not like it's a, unlike so a, a R tools. So I think R tools is you download it, uh, but here Xcode, you will install it on the, on the command line. So this is how you would do this on Mac machine. 
and then you could go back and then run this code again and hopefully this time you will get uh, it it will be true so now the environment is uh, is ready for development uh, another alternative that is uh, commonly used by mac users is to use uh, homebrew to install r the like this, the brew install R, but here the the I actually I don't have any experience using Mac. I've never used Mac in my life, uh, so I have no idea about what I'm missing on. But here the the author says that they do not recommend uh, installing uh, installing R this way uh, because you will get into some troubles. Because here when you install R with brew. It will not, it will be incompatible with CRAN packages binaries, which is uh, I don't think this is any uh, desirable thing for any R user so to not be able to install packages from CRAN. So yeah, but um, they suggest you to get away from installing R this way. Uh, but uh, since we are uh, we started actually our meeting today, we was talking about Conda. So here they uh, talk about uh, the conda, like uh, can we use conda uh, in uh, install a development a development environment for R within conda, which seems very uh, appealing, especially for reproducibility. But here, uh, nevertheless, you might get into a problem that not all packages but not all, uh, not many R packages are available in Conda. So here they provide a number. It's a th yeah, thousand five hundred out of almost three thirteen thousand packages are available in Conda. I'm not sure if this number has increased uh, for nowadays, but uh, they say that uh, here because the not so many packages are available in Conda, you will not be able to use many of the packages that you would. Like. Yes, Shabs. Yeah, so my question here is Conda um, is both, you know, package manager that we can use and environment manager. So in this context, um, we are only using Conda as package manager, not environment manager, right? For example, using Conda, I can install package whatsoever. And using Conda in Python world, we can create environment where I will do separate installation of packages stuff that I, I can activate the packages. So in this context in R, Conda is used only as package manager, not environment manager. I don't know if uh, you got that, what I'm saying. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, I, I think from the context, uh, they are here, they are talking about Conda as a package manager. Uh, because this is this is the topic of of this chapter. Uh, yeah. So, well, and, and that's that's one of the like things to be cautious about with Conda is that it is both an environment manager and a package manager, and you just want to avoid smashing those together and confusing things. Um, so I like I don't know. The advice I have gotten is don't use Conda as a package manager, even for Python. So uh, definitely don't use it as a package manager for R. Yeah, I mean, for Python, a lot of people are using it um, for Python as package manager because, um, you know, it comes with a lot of its advantages. Um, uh, like, unlike P as well. So anyway, um, I think here, as you said here, is used as a package manager only because I was looking a way to, for um, environment manager, right? <laughs> so this is not the solution. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So yeah, I think for environment manager, uh, our end would be the, the best choice. Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, but by the way, John or Ahmad, do you have a, a, a situation whereby you need to use different kind of, you know, packages of different maybe version that you need to have separate installation. How do you deal with that if you come across That's, that? Uh, use RN. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, it, what RM does is for a given project, you say 
like each time you use a package, it logs the what you are using and the version that you are using, um, and like stores it in a cache. And then, like if you share that, you can share that environment that or that you know that RM lock file that includes you need to be using this exact version of this package. Okay, and uh -huh. and so, um, it it like allows you to quickly re, uh, match that state. Yeah. So let me give this scenario and see how we can deal with it. So for example, this is just my problem I have. So for example, um, I want to run um, in the same my PC. I, I I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, I don't want to cut you off, but I, I don't think that's what we're talking about in the book club today. And I like, I don't, ha I don't think that I can answer it. Okay. Uh, uh, ask it on the Slack and hopefully someone can help. Okay. Um, and, or when we finish up today, we can go into that, but it's not like what this chapter is going to be about. Uh -huh. And so I'm not immediately prepared to answer that. And I'd like to get okay. through the, the book. Okay, good. All right. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> But uh, the good news is these chapters tend to be short, so we'll probably get to that after the chapters. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. that that was it for chapter chapter nine. So it was mainly some mm -hmm. tips for uh, different ways of installing binaries or source packages on Windows and uh, and Mac. So for chapter ten, we here we carry on with the same topic, but here we go in a bit uh, in depth. So sometimes the, you maybe would like to use a package, but this package is, uh, you would like to install a specific version of that package uh, because you're maybe using a, your previous colleague that uh, used to do your work, uh, was not using RN, and then now you would like to keep things as consistent as, uh, as they should be. So I would like to use the same version. So and instead of using inst install uh, packages, you could use DevTools and then install version. Uh, but I think also in install packages, you could specify the version of the package that you would like to install, right? I, I think that this is possible because I have previously done something similar. For... Yeah. Uh, but maybe I could look up this. I don't Let's think see. you can just in base install packages, but you can through like that. That's a whole other thing too. That the um the Microsoft the MRAN is shutting down, and that's what a lot of people use for mm -hmm. uh versioning. And so it's it all comes down to. If you think maybe you want to use RM, start using it <laughs> sooner rather than later, because uh -huh. once you're using it, it's easy. If you didn't use it previously, then it's hard to go back and deal with it. Oh. I see. So. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so in order to install a specific version of uh, of a package, like a previous version, you make dev tools your friend, and then you use an install <laughs> version function from this. Uh, or if the package is, uh, you would like to have a, the package that you're interested in, you would like to use the the development version. Uh, the development version from GitHub, or exa for example, you could uh, use install dev from DevTools uh, also. Uh, so, and so here install, install dev is not similar to install GitHub. So I think in, install dev would still uh, install th something from. Oh, okay, sorry. So install dev will install the development version, but it will install it from CRAN. Uh, it it uses CRAN to find where to look up, uh, where to find the the source version. So in the description, so it looks at the description from CRAN, uh -huh. and then, um, in that description, there's a URL that is like um or there can be a URL of where the source of the package is and it uses that and it goes there. And so it's a wrapper around install GitHub and install GitLab and install Bitbucket basically. 
interesting yeah oh thanks for this yeah great so yeah these are the the three um uh, the three go-to functions if you're trying to install something that is not uh, on cran and it's the uh, a released version of a package so for example here if you're uh, using a deep layer and you would like to install like maybe there is a, a new uh, updated function and you're uh, in, in the pipe and you would like to have a look at it, you could install the development version using install dev. And if it's not, if it is not on CRAN uh, anyway, you could use uh, install GitHub for a package that is uh, on GitHub. And also, as we said, like you could install, use install version to install a previous version of a, of a package. And this is how you would use it. You would pass the name of the package of interest and then you will follow it with the version uh, that you would like to, to in install, yeah? And here they talk about uh, yet uh, two more useful functions from DevTools that allows you to, you, to deal with uh, locally available packages. So for example, if you are developing a, a package and it's, it exists in a, in a directory on your machine as a R script, and you would like to run it uh, and install it in uh, the same way you use install packages and library functions, uh, you could use dev install to install the locally available. So it will be like a directory. You will refer to the directory and inside this directory, there's R scripts. This is what I understand. I, I haven't used uh, them before. I, actually, I didn't develop an R package before. Uh, yeah, so, and for yeah. dev tools, it will do something that would look like library after installing a, a package from CRAN, you use library. And here, if the package is already available as source code in your machine, you could just use dev tool, load all, and it would uh, load the package to your R environment. The advantage of load all is that it loads. Uh, so if you're working with a package, if you, you know, if you're writing a package, um, it also loads the unexported functions. And so you can have functions that don't actually get exported by the package, but you might call them from other functions inside of the package. And so it lets you like work that all out basically. So uh, it makes a lot more sense when you are working on a package. So by, by the unexported functions, are these the functions that are available after the three triple colon? Uh, no, it's no, functions no. that Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Yes. Triple colon. I, I was absolutely yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That, that's amazing. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I, I, sometimes I, I use triple colon to get a, a function. And I think this, this function that is used by the development team of a package. And I would like to use one of these functions to make yeah. my life easier. <laughs> but I didn't know that load that all would allow you to do this. So you got to be really careful with that because. Uh -huh. If it's not exported, you can't be sure that it will still be there in the next version of the package. Like they might change the way they implement things behind the scenes and not use that, you know, that function might just not exist anymore, even though they don't even, it might not even be a major uh, version change because they didn't change anything in what users can see. Um, so just be careful about that. Uh, but again, if you're locking everything to versions, you should be okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. And Shams has a question, it looks like. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry. Oh, yeah. your hand's just still up. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. And finally, we, uh, it's uh, so, sometimes you would like to maybe make a, a local library for packages. You would like to install packages at not in the main library that is that you are using, but maybe you're trying something and you would like to install packages uh, in a different library. Uh, so basically what you would do is you use, uh, you will make a directory where you would like to the, install the, the packages. So this will be the temporary lab library. And then uh, here, this is uh, where the library will be located in this path. You will use dir create. You will create a directory in this uh, path, and then you will pa pass this path to the install GitHub, and then you will install uh, a package here. Yeah, and then uh, 
next time you if you restart the R session, and then if you try to uh, load the installed library, now you will need to refer to the path of this library uh, because otherwise it will use the default uh, library that is defined in the R environment. Uh, and here now you could uh, use this package. So this package now it's it's not in the default library, but it's in this temporary library, but still you could use it like this. Uh, yeah, but you will need to take to keep uh, to save this path somewhere. Uh, and yeah, uh, finally, you could clean things up. I, I, I haven't used unlink before. It's uh, delete effectively. So it's it, it just deletes that file. OK. Or in that case, it's a directory. And so it's saying to delete that directory now that I'm done with it. Um, I thought this was interesting. Uh, I could imagine doing this. I mean, I would probably, instead of this, I should probably just get in the habit of using RM. And uh, sometimes when I'm uh, answering questions on R4DS, I'm installing all kinds of crazy packages that someone's asking a question about. And I'm like, I've never used it. I don't know, but I'll go look at the package and see. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of times being able to answer your questions is just about being able to understand what error messages are saying. Okay. And so, um, so if I can install the package and see what it does, it's like, oh, okay, that's what it's telling you. Um, and so a lot of times I install all these crazy packages that it would be, you know, I, in theory, want to get rid of when I'm done. Um, so, I mean, I should probably just start using an RM session and I'll take care of that because I can just delete that project when I'm done or or whatever, or reset the RM. Um, okay. Recently, I've been in a similar situation because we, at work, we, you work on a server and you have limited uh, permissions. And I think that the, the main, the default library, I had a problem installing uh, some packages and because I could, I, and I needed to delete the, the pre previous version of that package before installing the new one. And right. I, I couldn't fix this without involving the, the admin. And I didn't have time to do this. So I just <laughs> installed things locally somewhere. And I loaded the, the package from this path and just went on with my life. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yeah, because it, it does have a like a hierarchy. If you have your own personal version of a package, it'll use that even if you also have like the system version of the package. So um, I've worked with things that way for sure before, and that is useful. Great. All right. So that, that, that was it for today. Yeah. yeah, these two chapters quick, but I think we <laughs> had a very useful discussion. <laughs> Thank you guys. Yeah, so I, I did have at uh, my old job, we had our, um, our studio server that we used and we would install things like universally for all of the installations, but then, you know, have our own uh, library as well. And so that situation I definitely ran into where the universal one, um, I couldn't update that, but I, well, I, I could, but not as myself. <laughs> I'd have, I, you know, we had that on a root user. Um, but yeah, you know, the, the hierarchy of libraries is useful to know about and that you can tell library where to look specifically. Don't go to my normal path, go to this different directory. Yeah. Also, uh, as an, an, uh, a recent experience that I had that is, is uh, related to this back to this chapter is I I needed to we had a very very bad internet connection at work and I wanted to use a package that so the package is basically it has some data in it so it's a, it has a large size and because of the bad connection installing it uh, inside an R session I ended up getting time out each time. So I, I couldn't install it in R, yeah? So what I ended up with is that I installed the source code, the, the, the like uh, zip uh, version of, of the package locally. And then I would just uh, install it locally and load it. And sometimes this is an option if you are dealing with a, especially for packages that are uh, large. And sometimes you keep 
you wait a, lo a long time for downloading it and then at the end of the download things break so i would just make sure that i have it locally and uh, yeah install it uh, locally and load it uh, locally yeah um there's also a um environment variable in r let's see if i can get yes what do you say john hold on i'm trying to yeah there is this um you probably don't have this set <laughs> um our default internet timeout that if you go to the help for download file in r there's a little note in there that um there is this timeout value that defaults to 60 se seconds um I personally have. Uh... So yesterday I was uh, Googling this problem and I found that you could set the timeout to it to whatever value you want, but I'm, uh, I'm not sure if this is the variable that I need to change. That is the very, so that's the, the environment variable. And then there's also an option that is set based on that environment variable. Um, although I'm not seeing it. Am I not seeing that value? Um, okay. Anyway, um, I was, oh, oh, never mind. Oh. I'm looking at the wrong one. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Thank you, John. Oh, uh, okay. Thank I, you. I was just, okay. <laughs> but yes, you can set the options timeout, which also can read from the environment variable. So if you set the environment variable, that like will, up, will set your option when R first loads. Uh, so if you do in use this, you know, we've talked about this in past, past weeks that you can do edit our environ, oops, environ, and mm -hmm. then, um, you, you would just set something like that in that envi our environ file. Mm -hmm. And most of the time it'll work, except I happen to be, I mean, I don't want to share my screen because it's got all kinds of keys and stuff showing, but I'm in a project where I have a project specific R environ file that overrides the uh, my normal R environ file, uh, which was something I am happy for this book telling me about because I would have been very confused today when I was like, why don't I have that value? Oh, right. Because this project is set up to act like the server. And so it has its own environment anyway. Um, but yeah, that download timeout, um, 60 seconds isn't long enough for a lot of things. And mm -hmm. so I just minus set at a thousand and 30,000, I could totally imagine doing, you know, it depends on what you normally do. Um, and that's in seconds. So I guess mine is set to about 16 minutes. That's probably realistic of what I want, 17 mm -hmm. minutes. Um, if it takes longer than that, probably, yeah, I do want it to time out. But I would be like downloading um, pre-trained language models that are very large and they take longer than 60 seconds. And it's really funny because even in the download uh, file help, they tell you that when you're programming with it, you probably just want to set that limit to be higher and then bring it back down when you're done. It's like, well, then clearly you know that the limit's bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> weird. Um, That's good, yeah. Yeah. Great. So, yeah, thanks for the functions. Uh, yeah, hopefully do, that'll help. Yeah, do you have any further comments or questions or anything? Uh, no, I, I need to bug Priyanka and make sure that she's um, going to be around next week for 11. If not, I'll I'll take it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's too bad because uh, Shams had to hop off and I'm like, okay, now we can talk about environment stuff. <laughs> um, so I don't, hopefully on chat or on Slack, we can help them out with that. Um, My pleasure. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. I will see you next week. Definitely. See you. Bye. Take care.